I want to share with you the five things that I have seen having worked in hundreds of communities and having worked with many, many organizations. But <laughs> sometimes when we're stuck in situations, we don't see things quite as e easily, you know? But the very first thing that is very often missing in every single team, and this is without a question, is the absence of trust. So trust is a really big issue. You know. Uh, being in a team is no different than being in a relationship. Uh, I'm sure that uh, all of you, I see four of you here, have got relationships. Uh, boyfriend, uh, girlfriend, uh, husband, a wife. It doesn't make any difference. I, I like to call it from the I to the we. And in a relationship, just like in a team, you've only got one thing going for you. You got to trust each other. If you don't trust each other, you have no team. So this is why the trust issue is the number one. I call it going from the I to the we. And you may have noticed that going from the I to a we in a couple is hard enough. Now imagine doing it with a whole pile of people. It can even be more challenging than on top of that, you know. Like in the last one that I did in Edmonton, one of them asked me, what do I do? I work with my team members and I don't like half of them. <laughs> I says, well, you know, maybe, maybe not a good finish, but you know, in a team, even if you don't like each other, as long as you're going in the same direction and you're not pulling against each other, okay, you can still accomplish things. But it sure heck, it helps if you like each other. And then the second biggest issue I've seen in teams, and this is the second one, and these are free for you, Frank. I'm giving them to you for your next workshop, okay? It's called the fear of conflict. People have issues of conflict with each other. And look, sometimes we don't agree. Uh, if all of you have been in relationship, I'll repeat that. Sometimes we don't agree. Okay. So we have to be able to deal with conflict with each other and we don't have to kill each other. You know, we can just deal with the conflict. So conflict issues are big. So sometimes if you have one person okay, who is quite extroverted and they are maybe, let's say, a little tough and a little pushy and they want to get the point across, you'll often see people will do nothing about it because they're afraid of it. I was in a meeting once in Chisasabi, in the Cree Nation of Chisasabi in northern Quebec. I'll always remember there were uh, ten people there. Nine people thought the idea was great. One person dumped on the idea and didn't like it at all, so it fell. And I remember looking at them all and saying, hey, there's only one who don't like it. What's with you people? You're going to let this great idea die just because of this one person? Nobody wanted to do They just let it go. So sometimes fear of conflict is a big one. Then in most teams, and this you will have all seen, they maybe have a bit of a lack of commitment. <laughs> you see, in, in any team, if you're, I know these by heart, you know, because I've lived them all. In any team, if you don't have commitment, you got nothing. So there's a lot of people saying they're going to do a lot of stuff, but they never do. So every single team that I put together, they all had to sign a commitment agreement. And this one, okay, they had to not just sign as a piece of paper, but they truly had to say yes. So if you're going to have to have a team, everybody's got to go in the same direction, and everybody has got to have a kind of a thing. Here's what happens. Every single team sort of, let's say they're down here at the bottom where my bottom hand is here, and they all want to get up here, right? I, I don't tell them for we all want to get up here. So this is the direction. But it's not where you want to get that, that, that really comes to play or an issue. It's how much commitment in order to be able to get there. And when you're in a team, every member is important. Otherwise, why bother, right? And then the next one is the avoidance of accountability. We, <laughs> I, look, I, I know one guy, I, I won't mention his name because, in, you know, who knows, you may know him, but I know one guy, okay, uh, his, his group hasn't done anything, and he hasn't done anything in two years, 
and he still gets a paycheck. In other words, and there's no accountability, nobody's hitting on him, and nobody says, hey, how come you ain't done anything for two years, okay? There's nobody saying, if you don't do anything, something will happen. So we avoid making people accountable for their commitments. And it's hard to make people accountable. I understand that. But if you don't, then they know if they don't do anything, nothing will happen to them anyway. So like one guy said to me, he says, oh, he says, we've been dealing with this issue for the last five years, but nobody ever does anything. Nobody's accountable for it. And so nothing ever moves forward. And then finally, the very, very last one is what we call the inattention to results. We, um, we look, the reason we're together as a team is for what? Is to have some kind of a result. <laughs> I mean, what do you want to get all together for? I mean, there's got to be some, some end game. You know, we usually see teams like uh, football teams or baseball teams or hockey teams. But really, uh, in, 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 in general, for organizations, for bands, you're like a hockey team, you know? You, 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 you want to have some results. You, you want to score. <laughs> you want to put one in the end goal, okay? And if we don't put attention on the results themselves, we never get there. So I call those the five dysfunctions. And around those in a two-day period of time is how I start to show how we can do it. And then the next one is how to hold incredibly effective meetings. I mean, how many of you, I, I know many of you, you're in a meeting right now, have spent half your lives in meetings. At least half. Okay. In many of the communities that I've been in, there is so many super, super duper meetings. But very often what ends up happening is they're not that extremely effective. I was in one meeting where I don't think they ever even discussed the agenda and three hours had passed by. So there is a way of creating an effective meeting, again, an agreement before. So what I do is I teach how to hold what I call effective meetings. This, okay? Because every, everything you accomplish, you accomplish in the we. See, most of us, it's called going from the I to the we. Most of us are very egotistically involved with our own stuff. Normal. I mean, we have bodies, and my name's Rolf, you know, so I'm involved with me. But how to be able to take that me and then be able to make it a we, where when I walk in there, okay, I am part of a team, that is and can be a true challenge. But if you've noticed in your communities, and this is why I focus on it so much now, unless you get to that stage where you can go from the eye to the we, you end up with teams with a pile of eyes and no we. And very little as a result, which will accomplish because everybody has a different idea. If I say something to all five of you,